Hi, my name is Oliver Zivanovich. I am a gynecologic cancer surgeon at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. I'm an associate attending there. And um, I wanted to briefly give you an update on the role of hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy for patients with ovarian cancer. It's a great honor to be presenting um, my, my take on it. And I'm extremely excited about the opportunity to be here. So HIPEC, also known as hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy, is a very controversial um, treatment modality. There has been a lot of uh, conversations about it. There's lots of strong feelings about it. Some are completely against it. Others are um, completely for it. And I, I think it's, it's really important to discuss this uh, topic uh, shortly and briefly here. And I, I'm very happy to share my opinion and also that of my institution. So HIPEC means delivering chemotherapy in the OR while the patient is undergoing a surgery for ovarian cancer. And we typically use uh, med medications that are ve well known, um, such as cisplatin or carboplatin. And um, HIPEC has been also used for other cancers, other solid tumors such as colon cancer, appendiceal cancer, mesothelioma, but I'm only going to focus on ovarian cancer at this point. So the rationale of giving hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy is that ovarian cancer stays in the abdominal compartment and metastasizes in the peritoneum very frequently. And um, the idea to treat tumor cells in the peritoneum locally has been um, established for a long, long time. And in fact, there's been multiple studies of giving intraperitoneal chemotherapy through a port into the belly for the past 20 or 30 years. Unfortunately, this modality has been um, abandoned because new treatments, intravenous treatments have uh, shown to be equally effective and less toxic. But the idea to give uh, one dose of chemotherapy in the OR while the patient is under anesthesia, undergoing a necessary procedure for the ovarian cancer is appealing because it's very effective, cost-effective. Uh, you don't lose much time between surgery and the first dose of chemotherapy. And uh, if we can show that it works, uh, the drugs that are given are also uh, not very um, expensive compared to other compounds and maintenance treatments. And in addition, it's not a treatment that deprives the patients from further standard of care or exper experimental treatments or maintenance treatments down the road. It's just a, an additional uh, treatment while the patient is in the OR. So um, one study that was published in 2018 from um, uh, Europe showed that patients who had chemotherapy for their ovarian cancer and then went to the OR for interval surgery those patients who, who were treated with one dose of cisplatin while being in the OR for 90 minutes did better in terms of progression-free and overall survival than patients who uh, had surgery alone without this treatment. And this triggered a lot of uh, converse conversation. And since the study was published, uh, the uh, national guidelines have accepted this as a standard of care in patients with advanced ovarian cancer who um, started their treatment with chemotherapy. Now, we at our institution do offer this uh, as a standard of care in exactly that setting. Um, it is very important to state here that patients with recurrent ovarian cancer or patients with uh, the initial diagnosis of ovarian cancer who did not have chemotherapy initially but were chosen to go undergo surgery first are not uh, candidates for this treatment because there's no studies to support uh, the benefit of this in, in these uh, patient populations. So it's really those patients with stage three ovarian cancer who started their uh, journey, their cancer journey with chemotherapy up front and go to the OR later. And um, I think um, we know um, very good data about the safety of this approach. Uh, in, in the past 10 years, multiple studies have shown that giving this dose of chemotherapy while the patient is in the OR um, is relatively safe. There, there, there is some increased risk of renal toxicity, so kidney injuries uh, after surgery, and this 
one dose of cisplatin are uh, being reported, but uh, you can mitigate this risk by giving uh, drugs that are protecting the kidney during the, the, the surgery and by choosing the right patients who don't have pre-existing renal conditions for, for this type of treatment. So uh, when you um, select uh, the right patients in the right setting, it is an extremely safe method to deliver chemotherapy. It's very effective that because the patient is under anesthesia, is undergoing surgery for ovarian cancer, and uh, you're not doing this anesthesia for the chemotherapy, you're doing the chemotherapy because the patient is already indicated for the, that uh, necessary procedure. So it's not an extra day of OR uh, just because of the chemotherapy. It's the other way around. Patients need to go to the OR to have necessary surgery, and we're seizing this moment to uh, deliver this drug uh, intraperitoneally. So um, in conclusion, I think it's giving uh, chemotherapy in the OR uh, as HIPEC, especially cisplatin, has been shown to improve progression-free and overall survival in uh, the very selected group of patients with stage three ovarian cancer who started chemotherapy first and go to the OR later. It's not proven in the recurrent setting of, of any, um, uh, in any recurrent setting of ovarian cancer. It's also not proven in the upfront setting uh, where patients present with uh, ovarian cancer and go to the OR first. Now, uh, we're looking, uh, multiple new studies are on, on the way to uh, look at the role of HIPEC in the recurrent setting or in the primary setting, um, but uh, those results are not going to be out there for the next two to five years, I, I'd uh, assume. Um, also in the US, um, the GOG uh, partners is planning a study um, combining surgery and HIPEC with, with cisplatin and, and also using maintenance treatments with PARP inhibitors. And this, is, uh, this study is going to hopefully start accruing um, next year. So altogether, it's a very safe treatment modality, but it's really important to use it in the right patients. I should not offer it to every patient with ovarian cancer. There's uh, strict uh, selection criteria. We should stay with the science. Uh, but uh, when used correctly, it is very safe and it uh, may uh, improve the outcomes of our, our dear patients with uh, ovarian cancer who are fighting this disease. Thank you so much.